Welcome to the deep dive. Uh uh. You know, diving into this source material. Oh, tell me about it. It's like opening a puzzle box, right? Yeah, yeah. And instead of like a you know a picture on the top, right? It's cryptic notes and haunting poems and yeah. fragmented journal entries, and it all seems to revolve around wow this poet named Bardo, his mysterious lover Ophelia, and a tragedy that stretches from Paris to Hamburg to Tallinn. It really does feel like um that the author kind of scattered pieces of a story across different times and places. Yeah. And we're here to sort of reassemble them. It's true. The, the fragmented style itself feels significant, don't you think? I do. Almost like we're trying to piece together a broken memory. Absolutely. So we start with Bardo living yeah. a quiet life. Okay. In a tranquil suburb of Paris. Okay. And um, it's almost idyllic. Nope. Until he starts seeing this ghost of a young boy named Bernardo. Mm. And, you know, that already sends chills down our spines, just considering that's also the name of Bardo himself, or at least a version of it. Right. Um, but what I find really fascinating is how these visions connect to Bardo's imagination. Okay. He's a poet, so there's this blurring of lines between reality and the visions he creates. Right. It's not just, you know, a kind of simple haunting or something. That no. This Bernardo apparition is constantly bringing up Ophelia, someone from Bardo's past mm. who now lives in Hamburg. Right. And it's as though Bernardo is urging Bardo to confront something or perhaps even s seek Ophelia out. Yes. And OK, so rewind with me because, you know, I love a good backstory. OK. We learned that Bardo and Ophelia were passionately involved five years before this whole ghostly visitation goes down. Yes. Yeah. They even climbed down a treacherous cliff in Portugal together. Wow. I mean, talk about intense. It's giving me like Romeo and Juliet vibes. Yeah. But make it modern poetry. And that's the intriguing part, right? The source material is juxtaposing Bardo's current peaceful life. Yes. With this fiery, almost reckless passion he once had for Ophelia. And it really begs the question, what happened between them? And why does it feel so unresolved for Bardo? Well, and remember those horses at the stud farm? Yes, yes. So he finds solace watching them? Right. Almost like they represent a simpler existence that he longs for. Yes. This detail seems subtle, but I think it speaks volumes about his state of mind. You're spot on. It's like he's drawn to their raw, natural energy. Totally. Which is a stark contrast to the complexities he's facing. Yeah. And if we connect this image to the recurring motif of the tree with the slit in its bark. Yes. Which appears, you know, that appears in Bardo's writing, memories, even Bernardo's visions. Yes. It feels symbolic, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. Like a hidden vulnerability, a wound that hasn't quite healed. A hundred percent. Yeah. Okay, so we've got a heartbroken poet, a ghost urging him toward his past love right and all these images of vulnerability and hidden depths yeah so where does ophelia fit into all of this well that's where we you know we kind of delve deeper into the heart of the mystery yeah um you see ophelia isn't just a former flame her connection to bardo runs far deeper than we initially realize hmm. she claims to be battling leukemia and hints at a troubled family history <laughs> oh boy but there's this underlying feeling that she's not revealing everything. Yeah. And this, coupled with Bernardo's insistence, right. compels Bardo to find her in Hamburg. And it's not just her family drama that's intriguing, right? right. Remember when we discussed the possible connection between Ophelia and Shakespeare? Oh, yes. I mean, her name is Ophelia. Right. And she did have that intense balcony scene with Bardo back in Portugal. Yeah, yeah. Could be a coincidence, but... It's... It's, it's interesting. It's very interesting. Yeah. And hold on to your hats because this is where it gets really interesting. Yeah. It turns out Ophelia grew up surrounded by Shakespeare, her father being a renowned Shakespeare scholar. Wow. This leads to a groundbreaking discovery, mm. a hidden passage in Romeo and Juliet describing a ritual. Okay. Imagine this. Staring into someone's eyes for 888 breaths mm -hmm. to reveal their destiny. 888 breaths. 888 breaths. That's like almost an hour. I know. Wow. I can barely hold eye contact for eight seconds. I don't know about you. I know. It's intense. But seriously, yeah. what is the significance of this ritual? Right. Is it about vulnerability? Yeah. Shared consciousness. Yeah. Tapping into a hidden dimension. It's a powerful image, right? Yes. The source material doesn't explicitly define it, but it implies a deep almost mystical connection 
Nah. Remember that strange graffiti Bardo and Ophelia found in Clypeda? Yes. The one with the n number 888? Right. It's like a tangible link between their journey and this Shakespearean mystery as though they're being guided toward a hidden truth. Wow, this is where our story takes a turn. <laughs> okay. Bardo finally meets Ophelia in Hamburg. Okay. And her family is, well, let's just say they make Shakespearean drama look like a walk in the park. Oh, boy. Her father, Peter Lovelace, is this domineering figure yeah. who practically breathes down everyone's necks. Right. And her brother, William, seems haunted by his own demons. The family dynamics are like a tangled web. Yes. Sir. There are whispers of incest and an oppressive atmosphere within the Lovelace household. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. Yeah. It's clear that Ophelia's been carrying a heavy burden for years. Absolutely. And then, bam, tragedy strikes. Oh. Bardo dies in what seems like a freak accident at the Stern Shanza station in Hamburg. Oh my gosh. But the source material really leaves us wondering, was it truly an accident? You know, it's interesting how the source material kind of plays with our perception of Bardo's death. Like yeah. on the surface, it appears random, right. a chance encounter gone wrong. But remember all those subtle hints, those shadows of doubt. Yeah. This isn't just a tragic accident. Hmm. It's a catalyst for something far more significant. Are you saying someone might have been responsible? Whoa. For Bardo's death. Because right. the way you're describing it, it almost sounds like he was, like, targeted. That's the question that lingers, isn't it? Yeah. The source material leaves it open to interpretation. But there's this unsettling detail about Ophelia. Okay. After Bardo's death, yeah. she writes, I love Bardo on her wrist. Wow. It's this raw, heartbreaking confession right. that makes you question her previous guardedness. Totally. Was it the shock of losing him? Yeah. Or the weight of a secret finally revealed. And let's not forget that intense dinner scene at the Lovelace house. Oh, right. Remember how Peter, with his disdain for anything remotely artistic, yeah. mocked Bardo's poetry? Yes. And, and the way he controlled Ophelia? Right, right. As though she were a possession rather than his daughter? Exactly. It all builds this atmosphere of unease. Yeah. Like a premonition. Totally. That something awful is about to happen. Exactly. That scene lays bare the power dynamics within the family yeah. with Peter at the helm. Right. It's as though he sensed a threat to his control. Okay. Perhaps in the form of Bardo and his influence on Ophelia. Okay, but if we entertain the possibility that Bardo's death wasn't an accident. Yeah. Who would benefit? Right. And what does any of this have to do with Bernardo? Well, brace yourself. Okay. Because this is where the story takes a turn for the unexpected. Okay. Remember how we were wondering about the connection between Bardo's ghost Bernardo? Right. And this concept of the Creole? Yeah. Well, it turns out Ophelia has a secret. What? Son. Okay. Who's the spitting image of a young Bardo. Oh, wow. And guess what his name is? Bernardo. Bernardo. You're kidding me. As if this whole thing wasn't strange enough already. I know, right? Oh my God. And it gets even wilder. Okay. This young Bernardo claims to be the reincarnation of Bardo himself. Hold on, back up for a second. Reincarnation. Yes. So you're saying Bardo's consciousness, his soul, was reborn into his and Ophelia's son. That's a lot to process. It is. The source material doesn't shy away from this possibility. Okay. In fact, it leans into it. Suggesting that Bardo's death wasn't merely a tragic end, okay. but a transition, a necessary step in a grander design, orchestrated by, well, perhaps by a version of himself. So we've got young Bernardo, yeah. who's apparently Bardo reincarnated, right. carrying on his father's legacy. It seems so. And deeply connected to this powerful creative energy called the Creel. Yes. But what does that even mean for him, for Ophelia? for the world. That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Yeah. And this is where that term Bardo use comes into play, uber poet. Uber poet, right. He believed that certain individuals could tap into the creel, okay. becoming shapers of reality itself through their creative force. So an uber poet is like a super powered artist. Yes. Someone who can literally shape reality through their creativity. Exactly. And you're saying Bardo believed he was one of them and that young Bernardo might be too. Precisely. Remember how Bernardo guided Ophelia and Bardo's brother to specific locations? Yeah. Almost as though he possessed an uncanny awareness. Right, right. It's as if he's channeling this Creole energy, oh, influencing events, and perhaps even nudging people towards their destinies. Wow. Think of it as a cosmic game of chess. 
Yeah. But instead of moving pieces, you're shaping reality itself. Okay, now my head is spinning. <laughs> it's a lot. But this all ties back to the 888 breath ritual, doesn't it? It does. We still don't know what Peter Lovelace saw when he performed it with Bardo and Ophelia. Right. But his reaction was visceral. It was, wasn't it? It was like they'd shown him a truth so profound, right. so terrifying, that it shattered his reality. That's the brilliance of the source material. It yeah. leaves us pondering, connecting the dots. Right. Perhaps the ritual, this intense act of shared consciousness, yeah. allowed Peter to glimpse the true power of the Creel. Okay. It's possible that for a man like him, right. so rigid in his worldview, so rooted in logic and academia, yeah. this glimpse into the boundless, untamed energy of the Creel was simply too much to bear. So are you suggesting that the 888 breath ritual could have contributed to his death? That it wasn't just a coincidence? Again, the source material doesn't explicitly confirm this. But the clues are there. It's as if the act of confronting the Creel, okay. this force Peter Lovelace couldn't control, right. triggered his demise. So it's like Bardo's death, potentially orchestrated by Bernardo, right. shifted the balance of power, removing Peter from the equation and allowing the Creel to flow more freely. That's a fascinating interpretation. Yeah. And it raises even more questions about William, Ophelia's brother, and his role in all of this. Right. He seems to be caught between these two opposing forces. Right. His father's need for control yeah. and this overwhelming wave of creative energy yes. embodied by Bardo and now Bernardo. Poor William. I know. He's been manipulated and controlled by his father. Right. Grappling with his own demons and then thrust into this maelstrom of events surrounding Bardo's death. Right. It's heartbreaking to think about what he must have gone through. Absolutely. Witnessing his own sister's complicated relationship with their father. Right. Being possibly forced to participate in Bardo's death. Right. It's a heavy burden for anyone to carry. It really is. But amidst the tragedy, yeah. there's this glimmer of hope. Yeah. A message of compassion woven throughout the narrative. You're right. Even in death, Bardo seems to radiate understanding. He does. Urging his brother to love Ophelia and William, not to hate them for their perceived transgressions. Exactly. It's a powerful message reminding us to look beyond people's actions. Yes. To acknowledge the pain and confusion that might drive them. Totally. It's a call for empathy. Yes. Even when faced with unimaginable circumstances. So what happens next? With Peter Lovelace gone, what becomes of Ophelia, William, and young Bernardo? Where do they go from here? That's what we'll uncover as we delve into the final part of our deep dive. Okay. The source material leaves their future tantalizingly open-ended. Oh, no. Hinting at new beginnings and lingering questions. It's really incredible when you think about it. Yeah. This whole deep dive has taken us from a quiet suburb in Paris. Right. To the depths of Shakespearean mystery. And now here we are. Right. On the precipice of a new era. Right. One that's being shaped by this, like, powerful almost mystical force called the Creel. Yeah. It's a lot. It really is. And what I find really striking is yeah. how Bardo's story, yeah. even in its like fragmented form, right. manages to weave together these grand ideas about creativity, consciousness, right. the very nature of reality, yeah. with these deeply personal themes of love, loss, and redemption. Right. It's both intellectually stimulating and emotionally resonant, you yeah, know? Absolutely. And the way the narrative sort of blends elements of magical realism yes. with these thought-provoking philosophical concepts, Yes, it's captivating. It's like the author is saying to us, the readers, yeah. hey, what if reality is more malleable than we think? Right. What if our imaginations hold a power we haven't even begun to tap into? Right. It invites us to. It's exciting. It is. And also terrifying at the same time. It's both, right? Yeah. It challenges us to kind of look beyond the mundane yeah. and embrace the extraordinary. You know, one thing that's been kind of sticking with me throughout this whole thing yeah. is this undercurrent of inevitability. Okay. It almost feels like yeah. Bardo's death, his reincarnation as young Bernardo. Right. Even those events at the Marjami Memorial, like yeah. it was all yeah. part of some grand plan, you know? Right. Like a preordained symphony of events leading to leading to yeah 
We don't know what yet. That's a that's a great observation. The source material definitely plays with this idea of destiny. Yes. A path laid out for Bardo and hmm. now for Bernardo to traverse. Yeah. And but... remember that line from Bardo's writings. Which one? Our destiny is truly glorious, Ophelia, and it will triumph in strange ways. Oh. It's almost as though he had this right premonition, this awareness yeah. of a larger purpose unfolding. It's like he knew on some level that his physical death wasn't the end yeah but a necessary transformation right a stepping stone to reunite with ophelia and william in a way that transcends the limitations of their previous existence and remember this transformation is deeply intertwined with the concept of the creel of course remember how bardo dreamed of becoming an uber poet right shaping the world through like the sheer force of his mind yeah he envisioned a reality where art wasn't just an expression Wow. But a catalyst for change, a force that could reshape the very fabric of existence. It's like he saw a future where imagination wasn't confined to the page yeah. or the canvas, but could spill into reality. Yes. Influencing events, inspiring change. Yes. And ultimately guiding humanity towards a more enlightened wow creative existence it's a beautiful thought it is and now we have young bernardo who seems to be the living embodiment of that vision right wielding the power of the creole perhaps even unknowingly right. to shape the world around him but the question is what will he do with it right. what will young bernardo do with this power what will this time of the creole poets as bardo called it look like that's a good question and i think you know yeah the source material true to its enigmatic nature leaves this open to our interpretation All right. offering glimpses of a future transformed by imagination there's that one line that just keeps echoing in my mind we are explorers of dimensions oh i love that line i, I know. know it's so evocative it's such a powerful image it is suggesting that the creel isn't just about bending spoons with your mind but about expanding our consciousness right tapping into realms beyond our ordinary perception and those realms as bardo suggests aren't limited to the physical world that's they right. encompass the emotional the spiritual the imaginative all those unseen dimensions of our being right that connect us to something larger than ourselves so even though bardo's story is you know shrouded in mystery yeah. full of twists and turns it ultimately leaves us with a message of hope it does right this sense that even amidst the chaos and uncertainty of life, yeah. there's this potential for profound transformation. Absolutely. A deeper connection to ourselves and the world around us. I believe that's the enduring legacy of Bardo's journey. It's beautiful. It is. It's a reminder that even when faced with tragedy and loss right. and the complexities of the human experience, yeah. There's always a possibility for renewal. Absolutely. For growth. Yes. For tapping into this wellspring of creativity that can transform not only our individual lives, but the world we share. And you know, maybe, just maybe, yeah. that journey begins with a single act of creation, a spark of imagination that has the potential to ignite a whole new world of possibilities. As we resurface from this incredible deep dive into Bardo's world. Oh, it's been a journey. It really has. It's been so fun. I hope you, our listener, are left with that sense of wonder. Yes. A thirst for exploration. Absolutely. And a renewed belief in the power of your own imagination. Yes. To shape the reality you wish to see. Beautifully said. Thank you. It's been a pleasure, as always. Likewise. Until next time.